If you haven't heard the Quiggin Report number 29, I am going to attach it in a link in the description. I strongly suggest, actually I strongly advise you to go listen to the Quiggin Report number 29. Uh, it's not long, it's critical considering where we are right now in Canada. This video, I wanted to discuss something related to the Quiggin Report number 29. The title of this report is Pol Political Entryism and the Standard of Evidence. The uh, picture that you're going to see in um, the cover of the podcast um, of the Quiggin Report number 29 is a picture of Andrew Scheer, who is the leader of the Conservative Party currently in Canada. And he seems to be surrounded by a bunch of men that are dressed a little bit different than what normal people wear here in Canada. Uh, the picture seems fine and quite benign until you dig deeper in the individuals that are in that picture. Now, as an ex-Muslim uh, or a survivor of Islam, when I saw that picture, uh, I could tell that the people that Andrew Shear was standing with, like a tool, are using him and that they are radicals because where I grew up, I grew up in a radical form of Islam. For 26 years, I lived in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh. Central Riyadh is Wahhabi Sunni Islam, which is one of the most radical versions of Islam that are out there. And the truest, by the way, one of the truest to the, you know, to the, to the Quran. That's how they dress. These people have a dress code. And I'm going to repeat it again, but the dress code is, is not just what they wear. It's also how they look, the, the way they groom their beards, the way they wear, what they wear on their heads. Uh, the, the radical, especially Wahhabi and Salafi Islam, you will see that, that their beards are thick, heavy, ungroomed beards. You will also see that they have a very thin mustache that doesn't go well with the beard because their beards are really, they just let the beard go. So why don't they let the mustache go as well? That's actually mimicking, mimicking the prophet. There's prophet sayings where he advises to let your beard grow and completely shave off your mustache. And the less they have of a mustache, the more radical they are, believe it or not. The other thing is this little white thing that you see them wearing, that's, it's not per se radical, but it's strict Islam. Uh, this is not a person who wants to wear any type of Western clothing because they see it as a form of shirk, where they are mimicking the Western people and they don't like that. They prefer to mimic their own prophet. That's stringent. That's very strict ideology, right? Uh, the other thing is what they're wearing, the, the white short thobe or the white the white thobe that they wear, uh, if you look, if you see these people up close, you will see that the thobe is really short. It's actually above ankle length. That is your, that's a spot diagnosis of radicalism. Again, because their prophet advises them to do this. These people have nothing in their heads except the ideology of Islam and to force it on everyone. If they could, and trust me, if you allow them, they will do this. They want everyone to look and think like them, be it by force or by whatever method they choose, which seems to be victimhood so far, and it's working. So the um, other thing I'm going to attach in the description is an article, as well as a quick tweet from Tariq Fatah, that I really want you guys to look at as painful as it is. It's graphic, so I'm going to warn you right now, it's not for everyone.
but it helps to show you why I'm doing this video and where I am coming from. The uh, Imam is called Omar Subidar. This guy is a Pakistani Imam. In 2010, Imam Omar Subidar, who uh, the mosque that he seems to like to go preach hate in is the Mecca Masjid. It's in 8450 Torbram Road in Brampton, uh, in Ontario. In 2010, Omar Subida wrote an article titled Maintaining a Marriage, in which he explained the Islamic perspective of the marital relationship. And I'm going to read to you some of the things he said. Uh, like this is a direct quote. In order to lead a healthy relationship, Allah has given some guidelines for both the husband and the wife in the Quran. The first guideline our Creator has provided in Surah An-Nisa, this is the verse for the women in the Quran, it's, it's verse 34, uh, is that he has made the husband officially in charge of managing the relationship by saying, men are in charge of women. The reason why Allah has given precedence to men over women is only known to him it is due to the precedence that Allah has only selected men in the past for prophethood and for conveying his message rather than women. Look at this reasoning. So Allah is a misogynistic bastard and a sexist thing because you're not allowed to give a sex to Allah. So I, I, when I was growing up, I used to call it it because I was so afraid to design it a sex or give it, designate Allah a sex. So uh, this thing called Allah is sexist and misogynistic. And because we're not allowed to question Allah, we are supposed to obey. So let's just take this and implement it not only in the East, let's bring it into the West as well. Oh, under the guise of Islamophobia, by the way. So there is his message for you. Now, he continues on and he says, as for the financial obligations. A husband has to his wife, they are paying the dowry and providing the essentials of life, such as food, shelter, and clothing. The wives, on the other hand, have an obligation to be obedient to their husbands in matters that do not contradict the Sharia and to protect their, uh, to protect their chastity along with safeguarding their husband's property and children during his absence. Allah further explains in verse 34, again, the women, that the righteous women are they who are devoutly obedient, guarding in the husband's absence what Allah would have them guard. He quotes the prophet by saying, if I were to order anyone to prostrate to another, and I don't know if you guys know what prostrate means. Prostrate is an act of humiliation. That's the way how I see it. It's literally laying flat on the floor with your head down and your arms out, bowing to another person. So yeah, he said, if I were to order anyone to prostrate to another, I would have ordered a woman to prostrate to her husband on obedience. This is the Imam that Andrew Shear is standing next to in the picture, proudly showing his support to Muslims. He quotes the prophet, sorry, when a woman observes her five daily prayers, he quotes, fasts during the prescribed month, protects her chastity and obeys her husband, she will be told on the day of judgment, enter paradise from whichever door you wish. But if for some reason the wife becomes stubborn, arrogant or disobedient, you know, it's almost like they're talking about a child, 
not a woman, not a grown woman. Even after the husband is doing his part, then Allah has introduced three point dispute resolution plan. <laughs> Gotta love it, man. But those wives from whom you fear arrogance, then we start the plan. I'm going to read the plan. The plan, advise them, sitting down and having a discussion to try to understand what the problem is. And, and then uh, unknowingly, uh, not, you know, maybe he's doing something unknowingly, upsetting the wife, maybe he's irritating her, which results in this behavior that she's doing, you know. Um, so we need to sit down and talk. Fine, I agree. Talking is great. Step two. Forsake them in bed. If the problem persists, after exercising the first measure, then the husband should refrain from having sexual relations with her. Mm -mm. No sex. So now let's move on to step three. Let's say he stopped having sex with his wife as a form of punishment. Uh, what do we do? Well, strike them. If the problem still does not get resolved, then, as a final resort, Allah has permitted the husband to discipline his wife by striking her. However, this does not imply that Allah is promoting domestic violence. No, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has made it very clear that the beating should not be in, uh, agonizing in any shape or form. And then he's, he goes on, I didn't read all the article because I don't want to throw up. I'm just reading little bits and pieces for you. I'm going to link the article in the description. You should go look at it yourself. In it, they describe the proper way to beat a wife with a stick lightly, you know, because when you're angry with your wife, you're going to beat her lightly as an Islamist. You're going to make sure that you don't hurt her. I, I'm going to just move away from reading this garbage to explaining to you two main points. Point number one, this is a lie, just lies, lies, unbelievable. And I want you to think further into how you're going to put this into practice in, in cases of domestic abuse. I come from a very fractured home in Saudi Arabia. I'm disowned, you guys know this, but I grew up in a household that believed in polygamy and believed in all of this type of discipline. And this is very common in Saudi Arabia, as well as many Muslim majority countries where women are treated like absolute filth. No measures are in place, either by the government or by, you know, private systems in these countries to implement this and to make sure that a woman is not hurt when she's being disciplined by a crazy person who believes in this. Women are beaten. Women are thrown out of their homes. Children are taken away from women. Women are killed. Women are tortured. Women are abducted and imprisoned for nothing, for doing nothing, by the way. We are framed by the religious police as well as the system itself. The system is designed to destroy women. It's nice to read this stuff on paper and to read it in the Quran and to pretend that the ideology is equal. It is not. Once you have entered the stage of believing that a woman needs to get beat, it's the end. There's no more fixing. There's no more making it right, guys. So don't even go into this argument with me or with anyone. Domestic violence in Islamist household and in Muslim majority countries is normal. I'm just going to leave it there. there. You cannot, this isn't a rebuttal. Well, yes, but he says strike them lightly. This is not a rebuttal. You can't enforce this. There's no way. The other thing I wanted to tell you guys was when I saw the picture of Andrew Shear, I was sad. And I had a few discussions with people online as well as offline who continue to show their support to Andrew Scheer. I'm not even talking about Trudeau. Trudeau, we know his party is completely gone and taken over by, by Islamists. For me, anyway, I know this. 
Why is the Conservative Party doing this now? And how do we stop this? Why are people choosing to ignore this? You're not fixing anything by ignoring the facts and, and minimizing them. You have to call this out for what it is. I am not telling you to stop supporting the Conservative Party. I am not saying go support some other party. I am saying call it out for what it is and understand the problem. People like me, we escaped our countries, we lost everything, and you're going to hear me repeat this over and over. The horror that I lived, big part of it was knowing that as a female, as a woman, I had no voice. And in, in order for me to be heard, I had to leave the country that I was in and the environment that I was in because if a woman spoke, they would silence her in whatever way possible. To come to a country like Canada and to see your leader standing side by side with animals that promote the beating of women, I, I, I have no words, just none, no words. You guys live in a democracy where you can vote people in and out, where you have a say over your way of life, over who rules, you can you can change laws here. I couldn't. Where I come from, I come from a dictatorship, an Islamist dictatorship that would kill me and end me. Yet, you guys choose to ignore all this and walk away from it because you're lazy? Or are you scared? Or do you just not have the understanding to know what this is and what and, and how deep this problem is. But then again, you have me explaining to you this problem. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to end this video on one note. I hope that people wake up, not just from Trudeau and the Liberals. You have to fix what's happening in your country. And the only person that's going to fix it is you guys. Thank you.